LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels is drafted to the New York Giants in Keith's latest mock draft. We're going to talk about this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I am a senior draft analyst. And guys, thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. And you know I got to kick this intro to my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find the follow him on X at the talent code. Keep talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 National Champ with those LSU Bingo Tigers, man. And we are here, man, myself, Damian Parson. We are here to bring you championship-level content. It's around the NFL Draft 24-7, 365. We talk draft prospects. We talk draft philosophies, draft, stra- draft strategies, everything draft over here. And guess what, DP? We have a little mock draft going down. Yes, we're going to talk this mock draft. I have Jaden Daniels replacing Daniel Jones, Michael Penix, and Bo Nix. That's six quarters quarterbacks in the top 15 and then we have some interesting wide receiver landing spots listen i want to say shout out to every day thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day go ahead hit the like button make sure to comment and don't for, don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel with the hottest nfl draft content but dp i want to get this mock draft going man before we get this thing going why don't you hit them with our title sponsor Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, let's let's dive into this mock draft that Keith Sanchez himself has, has, has gathered up for us, guys. At number one, Caleb Williams, quarterback from USC, goes to the Chicago Bears. At pick two, uh, Drake May, quarterback out of North Carolina, goes to the Washington Commanders. At pick three, not Jaden Daniels. The New England Patriots select quarterback out of Michigan, J.J. McCarthy. At pick number four, the Arizona Cardinals stand pat, and they select Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver from Ohio State. At pick number five, the Atlanta Falcons trade up with the Chargers to select Malik Neighbors, wide receiver from LSU. At pick number six, the New York Giants select Jaden Daniels, quarterback out of LSU. At pick number seven, the Tennessee Titans select Joe Alt, offensive tackle from Notre Dame. At pick number eight, the Los Angeles Chargers with the trade now with the Falcons select Talese Fuaga, offensive tackle out of Oregon State. At pick number nine, the Chicago Bears select Leatu Latu, edge rusher from UCLA. And at pick number 10, the New York Jets select Rome Adunze, wide receiver from Washington. Let's go up and we got to start here at pick six. Pick six. The, the, the New York Giants have three i think three major needs to, to for this roster right now um you know quarterback receiver and corner some people still say offensive line too because you need to figure out the whole evan neal situation is he going to play right tackle is he going to guard do you need to draft another tackle but quarterback's kind of the polarizing one like people yeah. knew that paying daniel jones wasn't the smartest idea so people seeing that hey you're in a spot you're in striking distance for one of these quarterbacks keep kind of talk to us how did you – what made you have Jaden Daniels fall from three out of the top three all the way down to six to the New York Giants? Yeah, well, I almost feel like somebody has to fall, right? And I, when you do these mock drafts, sometimes we do them, right? But it's also like what do you like as far as fits? And everybody, the consensus – not the consensus, but, you know, the, the, the most trendiest situation is – um, Caleb, I mean, not Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels to the Washington Commanders, right? And there are certain elements that I do like with that, right? I, I like the fact that they have Terry McLaurin, Brian Robinson, and Jahan Dotson, right? But the offensive line, right, situation, and then also with Cliff Kingsbury and his style of offense, I don't know, right? Like, and, and that, that kind of concerns me. And so I think I like the fit of Drake May with the Washington Commanders a little bit more with his, you know, like he, he has a longer resume of, of throwing the football, right? Like they, they, there's just, you feel like there's just more there of him throwing the football and the ask could fit, it 
to me, it fits better. And he's also somewhat mobile, right? He's mobile enough to do a couple different things with him. So instead of a, it being more of a knock on Jaden Daniels, I kind of went with what I would like for a fit. And then also, you look at the New York Giants, right? I like Brand, Brian Dayball taking on a skill set of Jaden Daniels and pulling the very best out of him because, I mean, he got – you got Daniel Jones paid for the million dollars, right? So if you take a guy with like Jaden Daniels, with has some of those skill sets, right? He can throw the deep ball to jail, jail and hide it, right? I, I I like that situation. So it was more so about that. I was thinking about fits more so than hey, just the quarterback go high because I think at this point, DP, and and this is where I'm at with NFL evaluations. I I can grade the guys, especially quarterbacks, but. Mm -hmm. I also understand situations. So that's why I tell everybody stay tapped in post draft because that's why I'm going to really let you know how I feel about the situation and my predictions moving forward. I feel it. I feel that. And that's, that's a good point. I think day ball would be better suited for Jay. Now I'm going to tell you, I worry about Drake may go into Washington because of Cliff Kingsbury because Jake, <laughs> the biggest issue with Drake it's his footwork, right? Coming like, yeah. his first year, North Carolina using that and, and that Phil Longo offense. Who you guys listen that air raid and the way that Phil Longo coaches. If you dive into the history, most of the quarterbacks come out of that offense with bad mechanics, bad footwork. Sam Howell had that problem. It's been litany of quarterbacks, right? So I, I kind of then you know it, it got a little bit better in 2023, but it's still an issue where we saw like on tape and in the pro day where he's kind of air mailing passes that a guy with his arm strength, those passes shouldn't be so high. And what you know for a fact, you can drive it. You got that type of arm talent and it's because of his lower body. So, but I agree with you. Cliff is going to give him the opportunities to throw the rock, like throw the ball. Like you're going to drop back probably 35 times a game, even as a rookie, because Cliff is going to, he's going to mix in that run. But Cliff's going to stay, stay, stay true to being Cliff. Right. He's going to throw the football. You know what I mean? Keith, Number five, that's the one, like, when I first saw Jaden Daniels, I was like, oh, wait, okay. But five, the Falcons, who we know the one position that they have, that's been elusive for them and kind of on their, by their own demise, is Edge. And everybody's looking at Dallas Turner, Leitu Latu, Leitu Latu, and Jared Verse with them picking at eight. You said, no, nah, we're going to move up and get Malik Neighbors. Talk to us. Yeah, I just think the general manager, he has shown that we're talking about Terry Fontenot, right? He 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 is for trying to grab uh, elite level skill sets, right? Mm -hmm. And either of those edge rushers, I mean, Dallas Turner tested that well, right? But I don't know if the film necessarily warrants him being a top 10 player more than the trendy thing right now is that he ran the fastest 40 out of the three edge rushes, right? I think at post combine now everybody's saying he's a top 10 edge rusher, right? But when you cut on the, before then everybody liked late too loud to, and then now it's like late too loud to is way too high. If he's in the top 10, he got to go to the back end of the first round because he ran a four, six, five, right? Which, um, we just address that for another conversation. We talk, we say we do draft philosophies and strategies also, but I like Malik neighbors here because you, you're, in my opinion, you're all in, right? We go get Malik. You're talking Drake London. You're talking Kyle Pitts. Are right? you talking B. John Robinson? Now, even with Kirk Cousins, right? First of all, if a healthy Kirk Cousins is there, you can expect to put up 25, 27 points a game, and, and you should have the most explosive offense in the NFC South and be challenging for one of the most explosive offenses in the NFC. Now, you move past Kirk Cousins. You have all of these young weapons, DP, that – when you insert a quarterback, right, whether that's going to find another quarterback post Kirk Cousins or you feel good to draft a rookie quarterback, now you're in a good spot. I do agree that they need an edge rusher, but also, DP, I would say this, that this is not that 2022 draft where it was the Aiden, the Kayvon, the Jermaine Johnson, right? Like, it, I don't think it's necessarily that draft. So I, I just went with, hey, this guy, the general manager in the past, right? You're talking about Kyle Pitts, Drake London, BJM Robinson, right? When everybody told him he we don't necessarily need this, he still just went for the elite level prospect, almost like the RAS score, right? Like he, he went for that and drafted those elite level prospects. So that's why I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with Malik Neighbors here because he can help this offense. No, I mean, that's a good point. Terry fought. No, this would be what year? Four. Would this be like the fourth draft in the row? Yeah, like, so he, he did all. He Kyle. did Kyle Pitts. He did Drake London. He did Bijan Robinson. Yeah. And then now this would be his fourth one. <laughs> Terry, you better you better hold some edge rushes in day two, brother. Because uh, if your defense start getting lit up, man, I mean, the offense is sure with, with Kirk Cousins 
under center, you're sure to put up points. Kirk is always going to be able to do that. But if that defense is terrible on the, on the, in terms of getting after the passer, he's going to have some questions to answer. If they, you know, I think they can still win a division. But man, passing up on the edge. But I, I, I get the, I get the, uh, the understanding, Keith. I, I totally get it. It'll be fun offense and, to watch. And, and DP, I'll, I'll give you a little hint. I did give them an edge rusher in the second round. I, I, okay, I, addressed, okay. I addressed the need in the second round. We, we got us an edge rusher in the second round. But, DP, let's keep this thing going, man. Listen, that was picks one through ten, right, which I, I, I really like to wrap it up. I like the room with Dunze also to the New York yeah, Jets. Yep. I think that's a fun situation for Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson to be able to, you know, make, make that Super Bowl run, right? It appears they have one year to get the job done. But let's keep this thing going and flowing, man. Now we're on to picks 11 through 20 of my latest mock draft. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. How is your social battery right now, guys? I can tell you for me, I'm not bursting with energy, but I'm not draining them. Somewhere in the middle, mainly because it's winding down to that final stretch for the 2024 NFL Draft. You know me. I'm the host of this pod, as well as a senior draft analyst over at the Draft Network. So your boy hit battles from being tired to being energized, right? But it can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin right now, guys, especially now that spring is coming up with social gatherings picking up after the winter time. Yeah, it's kind of easy, right? What's the right amount of time uh, or right amount of socializing for you? Only you can determine that. And how do you recharge? Maybe you thrive around people or maybe you need some more time alone. Guys, if you think about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Dot com slash locked on. All right, picks 11 through 20. At pick 11, the Minnesota Vikings get their quarterback by selecting Michael Penix Jr. out of Washington. At pick 12, the Denver Broncos go with the trendy pick of Bo Nix, quarterback out of Oregon. At pick 13, the Las Vegas Raiders select Nate Wiggins, cornerback from Clemson. At pick 14, the New Orleans Saints find their answer at tackle and select Olu Fashanu out of Penn State. At pick 15, the Indianapolis Colts select offensive tackle out of Oklahoma, Tyler Guyton. At pick 16, Seattle Seahawks select Dallas Turner, edge rusher from Alabama. At pick 17, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback out of Alabama. At pick 18, the Cincinnati Bengals select Brock Bowers, tight end out of Georgia. At pick 19, the Los Angeles Rams select Troy Faltanu, offensive tackle from Washington. And at pick 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Kingsley Sewell Matia, offensive tackle from BYU. And let's go right up to the top. Talk about the quarterbacks a little bit more, right? We got Bo Nix and Michael Penix, two Pac-12 quarterbacks, back-to-back -back off the board. Keith, why, when you look at the Vikings, and Vikings being, being rumored, you had a trade up, but it wasn't the Vikings in the top 10. What, what made you say Minnesota's going to, you know, you had Minnesota stand pat instead of trying to get aggressive and get up, whether it was at four or five, whatever, and for them to go up and get one of these, one of the top four, the big four quarterbacks? Yeah, I, I think that Michael Penix has been left out of the conversation as far as being a, a top tier quarterback. But we and we haven't talked about his pro day yet on the podcast, right? But I think with his pro day running the 40 time, whether it was a four four five like some were reported, right? Or if it was a four five five, right? We're talking about Cam Newton ran a four six. And we, we consider him one of the best athletes to ever play the quarterback position. And so my point is, is that I think he's helped himself kind of dispel some of the notion with his, um, first of all, lack of athleticism. And then secondly, the injury situation, right? And, you know, showing that you're, you're healthy, you're mobile. This is what, two years in a row he's been healthy with no glaring injury. So I think it's more so about me sitting, me sitting back and predicting that the Minnesota Vikings will sit back and say, hey, um, this Michael Penny's guy, when we cut the film on, he's still a pretty good quarterback, right? And and what you're gonna be, what you're gonna give up because it's probably to move up from what pick eleven, it's probably gonna take obviously pick eleven and then what pick twenty three they have now, I believe, something like that, pick twenty three, pick twenty six. Yeah. It's gonna take more than that, I I feel like to move up. And if you're the Minnesota Vikings, you want to continue to build this team up in the trenches, right? Get you a defensive tackle, get you another offensive lineman, right? Uh, you know, Nate potentially need cornerback help. So I looked at it from that perspective. I DP, and we keep talking about the senior bowl. And what do we keep going back to? When I watched Michael Penix under center, I had no problem with this athleticism because we was always critical about his ability to handle pressure, and it looked like he couldn't move, XYZ. But 
like we said, when he was on those sprint outs, when he was on those rollouts, right? From when he was at the senior bowl, he looked comfortable. He looked fluid. He looked smooth, right? And he can deliver accurate passes. So I like him in this type of system. And then you you throw in the weapon, the weapons of Jordan Addison, uh, Justin Jefferson, then what TJ Hawkinson is returning from an injury, right? Yeah, and so he'll hope, probably be like mid-season probably before he returns. He, yeah, and hopefully he's able to be healthy and everything. So I, I, I like the situation for the Minnesota Vikings. So that was the reason why I didn't have a move up because I'm like, they might be tra- changing their thought process to wait, hold on. We might be able to sit at 11 and still get a highly talented quarterback. No, I mean, I, and I trust me, I get it. I, I do think I have that a question. Fits them. Yeah, and, and, and when you look at the mock draft, TP, tell me this do you feel 100% comfortable saying that Drake Maywood Washington is going to for sure be better than Michael Penix with Minnesota? No, uh, no, no, that's, and that's, that's kind of my point. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of my point is that he followed this situation. You feel like, hey, we have a really good situation to support a quarterback, and we could yeah. get probably higher return on versus the, the quarterbacks that go in the top five and they have bad situations. You go to, you, yeah, I mean, Washington, I mean, with, with Minnesota, that and that's the other thing. I think that's where, like, for Minnesota, like, you know, especially listening to what's going on now, is that i you know, most of my mocks, I had them trading up getting JJ. Uh-huh. And a lot of the, the talk now is that yeah, they trade up like they're trying to get in that top three. They're calling up New England, trying to trying to coerce New England to trade back, but it ain't for JJ, it is for Drake. And I'm like, oh, 100 percent because whoever falls to Minnesota, I think falls into arguably outside of Chicago, which is crazy. Both teams in the same same division. Those are the two, the best two landing spots, in my opinion. Quarterbacks for these yep. rookie quarterbacks, just as a rookie. Because Chicago having Keenan Allen, you know, bringing in Keenan Allen to join DJ Moore, you got Cole Komet, and you got a litany of running backs in the backfield. And then with Minnesota having an elite number one wide receiver and Justin Jefferson having a really good number two and Jordan Addison, uh, you know what I'm saying? Then you could add a number, another number three. You can even draft a, a rookie tight end if you wanted to. Then they got to find out who they're running back. Oh, no, they got Aaron Jones. I forgot about that. They signed Aaron Jones in the, in the offseason after he got released a day after the Packers let him go. So the Minnesota Vikings is, is a very is an outstanding fit for any of these quarterbacks. If if I'm one of these quarterbacks, I don't want to go. If I'm not going to Chicago, which I mean, if you're not Caleb Williams, you're not going to Chicago. I'm trying to go to Minnesota. I want Minnesota to trade up and, and, and snatch and, and snatch me up. Keith, I got to ask though. Oh, wait, hold on. I really I won't wrap up the Bo Nick situation too. Oh yeah. Um, because you talk about good situations. I think the Broncos at this moment is probably the exact opposite of that, right? And oh, 100%. And, but but I feel like, and the reason I gave them a quarter because I'm like, all right, well, cool. You know, well, maybe they take an edge rusher or a wide receiver or an offensive lineman and then wait to the second round, right? But you have to do your research. They don't have a second round pick. So that's that's not in striking dis- distance for a Spencer Rattler, right? Then they haven't been highly active in free agency to go get a quarterback that they feel really comfortable with. So it's like, man, like, yeah, you almost have to take a quarterback, but. Bo Nix, what he has to do, work on and develop, and then with this, you know, depth chart is is, is just not a great situation, and right. they don't have a second round pick. It's t- it's almost terrifying to see this fit, Keith, because it's like I'm afraid what we're going to see as a rookie is Auburn Bo Nix, where he's not in an awesome situation with Denver like he was at Oregon. The yep. offensive line's great, run game, you know, what I mean, litany of weapons, Tez Johnson, Troy Franklin. This guy, that guy, an uh, uh, offense that schemed up throws and opened things up and make it easy for him. Sean Payton, I think, is still a good coach, but just this roster right now is so devoid of talent in multiple areas where you're like, man, I don't know what to do with these guys. But I do think this is the pick that I'm almost expecting because I don't think Sean Payton is willing to wait another year. I, I don't know if he's there, Keith. So I think that's probably the pick we're going to get. I'm going to tell you, Keith, pick 15 caught me off guard, especially because the guy that went at 18 fell to 18. So the Colts passing on Tyler Guyton, I, I don't I don't know how I feel about that, Keith, because they still do – like tight end is a, is a little bit of an issue for them. Not mm-hmm. even a little bit. It is an issue because like they got uh, Jelani Woods, who was that big athletic guy yeah, like, two from drafts ago. Virginia. Um, that they just had – like I think he's battled some hamstrings, you know, those soft tissues can carry over for a litany of time if you don't get them, you know, fixed early. Then they got Moali Cox, another big body guy. And then they have I forget, Kyle Grant, I think Granderson, who's kind of a smaller, undersized guy, but he just doesn't have the athleticism and up like he doesn't have what Brock Bowers has. 
So mm-hmm. for me at 15, if I'm a Colts fan, I see this, I'm like, man, Brock Bowers better had gone early. And then you look down at 18, you're like, <laughs> Brock Bowers went after us. Like, what are we doing? So that was the one pick that really caught my eye outside of like, you know, Michael Penning at 11. Yeah. So I, I, I understand that. And I thought about that, right? Just, hey, I could give them, you know, give them Brock Bowers X, Y, Z, because, you know, I, I feel like Brock Bowers is a top five overall talent in this draft. Right. But it's just yep. finding those landing spots has become difficult. And then you don't really see teams, you know, talking about or talking up, you know, grabbing a tight end that high. I, I would take him if, you know, you feel like this is an offensive weapon and you could use him right. But I looked at it from the perspective of like we all in on Anthony Richardson and I get Brock Bowers helps also. But protecting him has to be a, a major factor, right? Because I, I just want my rookie quarterback to have as much time to be able to process the field and and figure it out, right? To start, you know, gaining momentum in his mind, like gaining positive momentum, right? Like seeing positive reps, like, hey, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing, right? And, and just continue to let it flow. So I was like, you know, could get him a weapon, but I want to make sure that this is a really good offensive line, right? To be able to move forward. And one of the things I liked with Tyler Guyton is that he is great in run, not great in run blocking, but he's good in run blocking, especially climbing to the second level. So I thought about this offense, right, with, you know, Anthony Richardson with the RPO stuff, um, Jonathan Taylor, right, toting the rock. I'm like, this is a guy that can help you in both facets of the football to ease things for Anthony Richardson. Now, obviously, like I said, I like Brock Bowers as a top five talent. I think overall pound for pound, he's top five football player. But I looked at it with Tyler Guy and I'm like, you know what? This can help. It's not the sexiest pick, but it will help in turn positive dividends. No, I feel that. I think, you know, um, because I think it's uh, Braden. I think it's the right tackle. I think Bernard Raymond is the left. Bernard yeah, Raymond, and- I I think he played pretty well uh, yeah, they, for a young guy. People were saying it was decent. Like the coach told me, I mean, uh, you know, talk to some people with the coach and everything. And they were like, you know, he's a different, you know, a decent player. So, yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, it was Raymond. And I'm trying to, re- was it Brendan Smith? I think is the. Yeah, the Bra- I think it's Braden Smith or something like that. I yeah, know it was Braden someone. Smith. Yep. Yeah. And I just, I just feel like you could get better there. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, sure. just, sure. just go ahead and get better at offensive tackle. But DP, let's keep this thing going, man. We are on to picks. 21 through 32, wrapping up this mock draft. Yes, that's where the Super Bowl champs are. Yes, that's where the playoff teams are. And yes, that's where I may have gotten a little wild with my picks. So stay tuned for picks 21 through 32. The sports calendar is loaded. And FanDuel's making it even more exciting to get in on all of the action. Because right now, new customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet i want to repeat that make sure you heard me clearly because right now new customers get two hundred dollars back in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet that's 200 bucks that you have at your disposal that you can use to bet on the ncaa tournament major league baseball nba nhl and so much more all you need to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Thank y'all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Sorry for being our every dayers at number at pick twenty one. The Miami Dolphins select Graham Barton, interior offensive lineman out of Duke. At pick twenty two, the Philadelphia Eagles select Terion Arnold, cornerback out of Alabama. At pick twenty three, the Minnesota Vikings select Johnny Jerzon Newton, interior defensive lineman from Illinois. At pick twenty four, the Dallas Cowboys select Jackson Powers Johnson, interior offensive line out of Oregon. At pick twenty five, the Green Bay Packers select Marius Mims, offensive tackle out of Georgia. At pick 26, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Xavier Worthy, wide receiver from Texas. At pick 27, the Arizona Cardinals select Quinion Mitchell, cornerback out of Toledo. At pick 28, the Buffalo Bills select wide receiver out of South Carolina, Xavier Leggett. At pick 29, the Detroit Lions select Jared Verse, edge rusher from Florida State. At pick 30, the Baltimore Ravens select Keon Coleman, wide receiver from Florida State. At pick 31, the San Francisco 49ers select J.C. Latham, offensive tackle out of Alabama. And at pick 32, the Kansas City Chiefs select Ennis Rakestraw Jr., cornerback out of Missouri. Keith, there's some good, there's some good landing spots here 
for some rookies, man. And I, I will, you know, it's a couple of them. But I like this right here. Pick 26, Xavier Worthy to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Getting, get, bringing, I know some people are like, well, don't they have Trey Palmer? Yes. And like you, you can't never have too much speed, baby. Like you, you know right. what I mean? You want to go 11 personnel, <laughs> some 10 personnel. I want to have Palmer and Xavier Worthy on the field, right? But bringing back Mike Evans, your number one wide receiver, right? On the two, essentially a two year deal for them, a one year deal if he hits a, cliff and falls off of it right they can get out of the deal in, in, you know at the end of the season chris godwin in the slot being that power slot that he is constantly moving the chains but trey palmer and pairing him up pairing those guys up with xavier worthy xavier is probably going to leapfrog him immediately in the in the in the de- on the depth chart right in terms of yeah, those two sure. wide receiver sets be that explosive z receiver but man route running um tempo like the, the the speed, like some guys tested well at the combine, Keith, and then you turn on the tape, you just don't see it. That four two one that we see, that we saw down in Indianapolis, right? For 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 um, you know Xavier Worthy, we saw that time and time again, many times on tape. So I love this fit because one thing about Baker, he has the arm talent to push the ball down the field, really good off of play action and with the run action to draw the eyes and the forward momentum of defenders to give his guys a step for a, a extra step into the secondary. I like that fit a lot. Yeah. That, and that, that's why I went with it. Right. It's like, you know what? Just keep doubling down on going all in. If you're the Tampa Bay Bucks, right. Uh, so somebody has to become the dominant force in this, uh, in this division. We talked about mm-hmm. the Atlanta Falcons earlier, going get Malik neighbors. Right. I think you make this division exciting again. Right. When it was Matt Ryan, Drew Brees, Cam Newton. Right. You, you had some fun things, even when Jameis Winston was with the Bucks. Right. You know, there's going to score 30 points. He was just going to throw a lot of interceptions doing it. But you get this division moving on to the, to the right, you know, right place in the right situation uh dp the, the pick that and that i think is sneaky good but that people aren't going to appreciate uh because they they still don't know where they all the way at with and and i think that xavier to get to the buffalo bills dp i, I just he it, it's just that complimentary piece and i think and i'm not with buffalo there's no inside source this is not even a per source right but if i'm looking at team dynamics and I'm looking at Stephon Diggs complaining, right? It, I, I don't think it's necessarily about money, DP. I think it's about when are we going to go all in on just being the, like, adding to this wide receiver room and stop playing around, right? Like, go get me a running mate. Go get me somebody, if I'm getting double team, somebody that can get open consistently and we can win the Super Bowl, right? Somebody that we know for sure. When we walk offensively, when we walk in there, we're better than Patrick Mahomes and whoever he has, right? We're better than the Baltimore Ravens. We're better than, you know, all of these other teams. So I, I think that you need to give Stephon Diggs a true running mate. They've spent three, four years on the Gabe Davis project when we knew after year one that, this was the ceiling, right? Like, and I think they need to understand that this that was the ceiling, and they now try to go do something different. So I like Xavier Leggett to the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I do too. And I think, if I remember correctly, I think it was at the Combine where he talked uh, very well about landing in that, like landing on the Bills and how pairing him with like Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs. And at the end of the day, like they need that second legitimate wide receiver but with Xavier Leggett, he gives them a future. Whereas, like, all right, whenever Stefan Diggs' contract ends or whatever, whenever that relationship, that time in Buffalo comes to an end, they have a, a young answer behind him at wide receiver to then build the passing offense around. And if you don't figure that out, Keith, like, at some, at some point you got to be on top of your game and know when the, when the plan for the future. And I think this would be a great step in the right direction, just giving Josh Allen – more weapons because then you still got Dawson Knox and Dalton Kincaid going into year two. James with Joe Brady calling the offense. I'm excited for what it will look like with him with a full season because he got the run game going. Something that Ken Dorsey didn't do. And you put Xavier Leggett into this offense and they got a run game going. Like it's going to make it a very tough to, to stop this offense once they get rolling mid to late in the season. No, I agree 100%. The other pick that I like, DP, real quick is cool. Y'all want to let the edge rushers fall? <laughs> Oh, Jerry yeah. Burst yes. falling to the Detroit Lions. That's um, crazy. I, I like that selection. And, I, you know, and this was kind of more so going with the trend. Do I think he should be picked at pick 29? No, this was a guy that was potentially edge two in last year's draft, right? Mm-hmm. That came back, that flashes the power, speed the power. But if he's unpopular because he ran a 4.65 and he's a defensive end, so be it, right? And then what happens is he'll fall to a good situation. And what the Baltimore Ravens are even in front of that, and I gave, no, I'm sorry, they right after that. 
it that's the type of Baltimore Ravens pick, right? It's like, okay, cool. Y'all going to let they, these guys fall. We'll just take them because we know that they're really good football players. But I do like him pairing uh, – Jared versus – uh, going to the Detroit Lions, pairing up with Aiden Hutchinson. Um, you either address the front end to help the uh, to help the passing game, or you address the back end, right? And they chose True. to go with the front end, and I really like that combination, that one-two punch. Yeah, I, I think most defensive coach, only, only coach I know that that values pat um secondary over pass rush was Bill Belichick. Most teams, most defensive coordinators are like, man, let me get my pass rush set. And then I can add more talent in the back end because at the end of the day, if I got two booking rushers and an interior rusher, and we can get and content consistently collapse the pocket with four, my guys are not going to have to cover for four to five seconds. We can get back there quickly, make these quarterbacks uncomfortable, and try to make some of these guys be like Sam Donald a couple of years ago, talking about I've seen ghosts on the sideline. You want to make them as uncomfortable as possible. Keith, if, if, if Jared Verse falls to 29, somebody made some mistakes along the way to let that happen because him and, him and Aiden, that's a dangerous duel. No, nah, that definitely is. And then pick 32, wrapping up with the Kansas City Chiefs, them going after cornerback Ennis Rickstraw out of Missouri. I like Ennis Rickstraw a lot. I, I think he has a lot of high-level traits, you know, to really develop into something. And I know people are going to talk about, you know, the Rasheed Rice situation, but I, I started to react to that, right, and then put, you know, a, a, a wide receiver in the first round. But that's just one of those situations you got to let play out first, right? Yeah. We let all of that play out, and I don't foresee the Kansas City Chiefs overreacting or – you know, making just one rash decision, right? Even, you know, if things don't turn out for the best uh, for Rasheed Rice with that situation. So, yeah, but DP, that wraps up another episode of the NFL Mock Draft Mondays, right? With the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. Listen, I want to say shout out to every day. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. Listen, I said at the top of the show, said at the bottom of the show, man, hit the like button. Go ahead and comment. Let me know how, how about your team selection. Whether you agree or disagree, let's talk about it in the comment section. And then go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, man, tell a friend to tell a friend to come check out the best NFL draft content that there is. DP, listen, man, we wrap this show up. I am Keith Sanchez. You can find me on X at The Talent Code. That right there, that's my co-host, my guy on the ones and twos, man. Handling the situation, DP, the technology, you're rolling, baby. You got it. You're getting it together. We are flowing, man. That is Damian Parson, man. You can find him on X at DP underscore NFL. And like we always like to say, man, y'all come talk to us because we like to talk back. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. And as always, come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.